Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.03. Hi, Sepka. Kwanaselepska keep a tenequail. To see a talatash nanemo, mustimo, nihak, wushasta, tamach, a tenequail. Thank you all for gathering here today, and I'd like to start by giving my highest gratitude to the people of Snanemo, on whose territory we're holding this meeting this afternoon, this evening, and recognizing that we also serve the communities of Snanalis and Staminas, and also acknowledging that we serve um, a number of students who are also Métis and Inuit, and those who live in this territory but are from other nations, and so we're very grateful that we have such a diverse community here. And it's not hard to see why um, we would be grateful to be on these lands as it's such a beautiful territory to be. We have no transfer of items to the open meeting agenda this evening, but I do want to take a moment uh, to acknowledge a couple of different things this evening. Um, first, it is um, it's the month that we celebrate Pride. And I just want to acknowledge the diversity of our school communities, uh, of the communities that we live in, and recognize that those values of diversity and a sense of belonging are, are something that we hold near and dear to us in NLPS. I'd also like to acknowledge Indigenous History Month, and that this month has also had some very sad news across our province, across the country, and with recognition of that sadness and that loss, we should, as a board, uphold our responsibility to education, to educating in a, in a way that is sensitive and caring for all of our members of our communities, that there's been trauma in the past, the history of residential schools, the truth of what that has done to so many families that live with it uh, today and every day while we work through generational trauma in our schools and continue to make education and our schools and buildings a safe place to be for all of our students and families. And finally, after what feels like a very long school year, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to every staff member in Nanaimo Lady Smith Public Schools on behalf of the Board of Education. You have undertaken so much change this year with COVID-19, regularly changing protocols, and you never fail to continue to serve students and have them at the center of your work each and every day, often giving more of yourself to your to your students in your classrooms to the your fellow colleagues, um, then maybe you give time for yourself. So I really want to recognize what everyone has provided this past year uh, on behalf of the board with our deepest, deepest gratitude. We wish you a very restful summer. Um, you are most deserving of that. Thank you very much. I would ask my fellow trustees if there are any additions, deletions or change in order to the agenda this evening. Seeing none, uh, is there any objection to the approval of the agenda? With no objection, the agenda is approved unanimously. Moving on to section seven of our agenda, approval of the minutes, that the minutes from the regular board meeting held on May 26, 2021 be adopted. Is there a mover? Moved by Trustee Barron and a second. Trustee Keller has seconded. Is there any objection to the minutes? With no objection, the minutes carry unanimously. Moving on to section eight on our agenda, section 72.3 report, that the section 72.3 report from the closed board meeting on May 26, 2021 and the special closed board meeting on June 16, 2021 be received. Is there a mover? Trustee Berzovich has moved the motion and a second by Trustee Wilkinson. Is there any objection to the motion? With no, emotion, 
No objections. The motion is carried unanimously. And so now announcements and reminders. Um, hard to believe, but our announcements are for September. Uh, statutory holiday is September 6th. Uh, schools will reopen on September 7th, 2021. The first education meeting will be held on September 8th. The business committee uh, initial meeting of the year will be September 15th and the Board of Education meeting will be held on September 29th. And so with that, it is my great pleasure to invite Nanaimo Lady Smith Schools Foundation to present to the Board of Education this evening. Uh, we look forward to your presentation each year and welcome. Thank you, Jen. Charlene, appreciate uh, giving us the time this evening. I'm just going to share my screen out here. Hit the right buttons, we'll be all off to the races here. Great. All right, can everybody see uh, school bus? Yes, we can. Excellent. I just want to thank you for providing us the time tonight to share the work that the Foundation has been involved with over the last year. My name is Dan Morris and I'm the president of the Nanaimo Leesman Schools Foundation and I'm happy to re be representing the board and staff of the Foundation tonight. I first became acquainted with the Foundation over 15 years ago during a Rotary meeting. I was surprised to hear about the level of poverty that was present in our own community. As Crystal's predecessor, Aaron Banstein, relayed stories to our group about the kids who were only receiving food thanks to the care of their teachers as they fed kids off the sides of their desks. I'm one of the longest serving board members and with around 10 years of service, and I can attest to the growth and change that has occurred over, the, over my time of how the students of the district have been benefited from the work that the foundation has done and continues to do. So who are we? Well, we're a registered charity with roots originally based in the financial awards, but serving year round needs for decades well beyond just awards. We operate with a volunteer community board and hold regular meetings. We operate extremely efficiently. We have minimal staff and we use minimal resources. The foundation and the district share a common client, the students of the school district 68, and there are many similarities between the district's vision, mission and values, as well as the foundations. Our vision is every student reaching their true potential. The district's vision is similarly focused on the student's success, courageous, innovative, inclusive, and personalized learning community that inspires success for all. Having a common client with similar goals assists us in the continued success of our longstanding synergistic relationship. So why do we need the foundation? Well, as I mentioned just a few moments earlier, of which you're all aware, Nanaimo has a high rate of child poverty. There's many kids in our district who are adversely affected by poverty and the help that we're able to provide give these kids a hope for a better day and a community cheering squad to help encourage them along. Having a community volunteer board helps the foundation reach deeply into our community to raise awareness and funds of the challenges that our students face. The universal community support is a testament to the important work that the foundation is doing. So how do we help? Well, we're able to quickly provide help directly to the students as needs arise, whether they're programs or individual requests. Through the programs we have, we are strive to encourage graduating students to further, further their education. Wherever we can help to remove barriers, we strive to do so. We have a number of different programs that uh, are hard to find ones. We have the Student Support Fund. We have the Food for Schools. We have Music Initiative Grants enhanced learning initiatives, scholarships, bursaries, and awards. Let's take a moment to go through each of these. The Student Support Fund is how the foundation reaches deep into the schools to help all grades in all schools. We receive a variety of requests from assistance from principals, teachers, staff, as well as community support workers. We have received requests for running shoes for several students. We were able to provide brand new New Balance runners through a partnership with Nanaimo New Balance, or New Balance Nanaimo. Graduation is an exciting time for, for most, but for some students, the cost is prohibitive. The foundation has covered the cost of grad feeds, including cap and gown, as well as yearbooks. We covered the cost of food safe for a student who needed training for a potential job. We've helped purchase jackets, boots, and warm winter clothes to help young students stay warm and to be able to play outside with their friends during recess. We're always saddened to hear how difficult it is for students with regard to hygiene products. This year, we've provided soap, body wash, shampoo, as well as feminine hygiene products to students at several high schools, as well as a number of elementary schools. 
With our meeting depot, we are better able or better equipped to collect and provide hygiene hampers to schools. Child, youth, and family support workers have been able to purchase clothing for students who have been coming to school wearing the same outfit day after day. A neighbor once noticed that a student was suffering from a terrible tooth pain and the family could not afford to have the, have the teeth fixed. Over a period of several months, the student had several teeth extracted, had fillings to repair her badly decayed teeth. She is now pain free. There was a family that was displaced by fire and they were left with nothing. The family had students in both the elementary and high schools. We were able to help them provide clothing and shoes to help them get back on their feet. We've provided bike helmets so kids can get to school safely. We've covered fees for students who can't afford the supplies for their cooking classes. We even had a request from a social worker from, the, from Island Health just recently for a family with elementary, elementary children that have absolutely nothing to eat. We were able to quickly put together an emergency food hamper for them. We have been able to help families who have had their entire apartments overran by cockroaches. Thanks to our generous donors, we are able to provide direct to student support, meeting the needs confidentially and thus encouraging as many as possible to stick with school and to pursue post-secondary education. Next one up is a music initiative grants. Through our music initiative grant programs, we've been able to provide instruments for elementary schools. We provided recording studio equipment for the learning alternatives, and we've also provided funding for musical theater productions. Through our Enhanced Learning Initiatives program, we've support, we're able to support student leadership, community development, and social responsibility programs. In a partnership with the RCMP, we've helped out with the Yes to No program. We've worked on district initiative grants, trustee legacy grants, QP for Kids, and Indigenous Student Connectivity program that was just uh, just as COVID started going. We're able to help fund specialized programs with schools providing value to students through different learning opportunities. Scholarships, bursaries, and awards. This is one area that I've been heavily involved with over the last five years. This year, we had 439 students who applied for scholarships, bursaries, and awards, and 424 received scholarships totaling $355,235, as well as 122 district authority scholarships totaling $152,500. The massive process of handling the scholarships, bursaries and awards takes months of work and many volunteer hours. The students are awarded for their academic achievement and for overcoming adversity. And the result is the students being encouraged to chase their dreams. The Food for Schools program has filled a huge need in throughout our community. Thanks to Crystal's hard work and commitments from our own community and national supporters, this program has expanded exponentially. Pre-COVID, we supplied 70,000 meals in 16 schools. With grants and donations, we were able to purchase kitchen equipment, supplies, dishwashers, and fridges. We're extremely grateful to the district for helping support this program with space at Woodlands and helping get deliveries made to the 650 students every day. We look forward to furthering collaboration as we solidify the delivery component. The foundation's strength is sourcing and preparing food, which benefits, which is a benefit to schools throughout the district. During COVID, our Food for Schools program shifted into high gear. As students were sent home, the foundation partnered with the district and with other groups listed on the screen there at the top. 997 students from 33 different schools received delivered food hampers each week. There was just under 5,800 hampers were delivered with food value reaching over $140,000. Screen, the screen here shows the fund distribution from 2019 to present. At the bottom, you'll see that there was a million $67,500 that was invested into the district, all thanks to generous donors. So where does the money come from? Of the foundation's annual contributions to scholarships, foods, student support, and other initiatives, the district only supplies two seconded positions, the office space and the kitchen space. The remaining funds all come from donations and from volunteer activities. We're very happy to be able to take only a little from the district while giving back a significant margin to the students of the district. On the screen, you'll see some of our foundation's community partners and funders. You'll see that a vast majority are local groups and individuals who believe in our community and are willing to give back. We're extremely grateful for all of these partnerships. How can trustees help? 
Well, most of all, we really appreciate the collaboration and the synergies that we enjoy as we both serve the students of the district. We appreciate having the seconded staff and the space for our operations. We can use more help with the distribution of food through our Food for Schools program, and that's something we've been working along with the school district to just try to help solidify further. But most of all, we're thankful to, for your belief in the work that the foundation is doing and your continued support. Thank you for partnering with us as we cheer on the accomplished students while helping the vulnerable students stay in school and as we strive to encourage all students to succeed and chase their dreams. We look forward to continuing to work together to serve the students and to benefit the communities of Nanaimo and Ladysmith. If anybody has any questions, I might be able to answer some of them, but luckily I got Crystal here to answer all the ones I don't know. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Dan. I think I will start just by expressing my thanks um, for the compilation, the presentation, first of all, but more importantly, the work that's happened over the past year um, and well before that. But of course, I've, I'm thinking specifically of this last year and how important it was for students to be in school. And a lot of those students were in school and supported well because of the foundation. And so I really want to express our thanks for that. Um, I don't have any questions other than to say, um, hopefully my tears didn't show, uh, the, the gratitude to feel at the end of the year after a very long year for so many people and to know how many students you've impacted. I really just want to lift you up and, and raise, raise you up and lift up the foundation and all of the staff that are there and the volunteers for all of the work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's uh, Crystal, a lot of work from Crystal and Sandra and then all of our volunteers. So really applaud them for all the work that they've done. Absolutely. Uh, trustees, do you have any questions? I think you might get off easy this evening. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in person and sharing, you know, future gratitude, further partnerships and supporting kids together. Uh, we're better together. Thank you very much. Take Appreciate care. your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. OK, so moving on in our agenda, we will move to section 11 correspondence. 11.1, uh, the recommended motion in your agenda this evening is around Departure Bay Eco School parents. And the motion is that the Board of Education of School District Number 68 and I'm a Lady Smith refer the above correspondence regarding elementary band programs to the board chair for response. Is there a mover? Moved by Trustee Higginson and a second by Trustee Brzezovich. Is there any objection to the motion? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We'll move into section 12, committee reports with the business committee. I'll invite Trustee Keller to start us off. Thank you, Chair. So this evening we have a series of five motions, um, so I will read the first one. Um, it reads as follows. That the Board of Education of School District Number 68, Nanaimo Lady Smith, give all three readings of the Capital Bylaw Number 2021-2020 sorry, 22-CPSD68-01 in one meeting. And do we have a second? Uh, Trustee Brzezovich seconds the motion. Uh, Trustee Keller, did you want to speak to it or? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. I think we had a good discussion in our last business committee meeting. Great, thank you. Uh, seeing no other discussion, I'll call the question on the motion. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Trustee Keller, back to you. Thank you, Chair. So I'll read the next one. It's quite lengthy, so please be patient with me. It reads as follows. Whereas in accordance with, this, with Section 142 of the School Act, the Board of Education of School District Number 68, Nanaimo Ladysmith, here and after called the Board, has submitted a capital plan to the Minister of Education, here and to called the Minister, and the Minister 
has approved the capital plan or has approved a capital plan with modifications. Now, therefore, in accordance with section 143 of the School Act, the board has prepared this capital bylaw and agrees to do the following. A. Authorize the secretary treasurer to execute a capital project funding agreement related to capital project contemplated by the capital plan or the capital plan with modifications. B. Upon ministerial approval to proceed commence the capital projects and proceed diligently and use its best efforts to complete each capital project substantially as directed by the minister. C, observe and comply with any order, regulation or policy of the minister as may be applicable to the board or the capital projects. And D, maintain proper books of account and other information and documents with respect to the affairs of the capital projects as may be prescribed by the minister. Now, therefore, the board enacts as follows. One, that the capital bylaw of the board for the 2021-22 capital plan as approved by the minister to include the supported capital projects specified in the letter addressed to the secretary treasurer and superintendent May 13th, 2021 is hereby adopted. This bylaw may be cited as School District Number 68, Nanaimo Ladysmith Capital Bylaw Number 2021-22 CPSD 68-01. Read for a first time the 23rd day of June 2021. Thank you, Trustee Keller. Is there a second? Seconded by Trustee O'Neill. Did you want to speak to it, Trustee Keller? Uh, no, thanks, Chair. Again, as we had the debate at the business committee meeting, I don't think there's anything to, that I'd like to add at this time. Great, thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? With no opposition, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. So I'm looking for a second reader of the bylaw. Would you like me to read it, Chair? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so the uh, reading is as follows. Uh, the capital bylaw of the board for the 20-22 capital plan is approved by the minister to include the supported capital projects specified in a letter addressed to the secretary treasurer and superintendent dated May 13, 2021, is hereby adopted. Two, this bylaw may be cited as school district number 68, Nanaimo Ladies Capital Bylaw number 2021-22-CPSD 68-01. Read a second time this 23rd day of June, 2021. Great. And is there a second on the motion? Yeah, I have one from Trustee O'Neill. <laughs> is there, I'll call the question on the reading. Is there any opposition to the second reading of the bylaw? With no opposition, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And Trustee Higginson for our third reading. Uh, thank you. So just from the number one. Correct. Okay. The capital bylaw of the board for the 2021-2022 capital plan as approved by the minister to include the supported capital project specified in the letter addressed to the secretary treasurer and superintendent dated May 13th, 2021 is hereby adopted. This bylaw may be cited as school district number 68 and I'm a lady Smith capital bylaw number two. 2021-22 CPSD 6801 read a third time passed and adopted the 23rd day of June 2021. Thank you and seconded by Trustee Keller. Thank you and I will call the question on the third reading. Is there anyone opposed to the third reading? With no opposition, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Trustee Keller, over to you. Thank you, Chair. The last motion reads as follows. 
that the Board of Education of School District number 68 and I'm Lady Smith in accordance with the provisions under section 142 sub 4 of the School Act approve the proposed five year capital plan for 2022-2023 as provided on the five year capital plan summary for 2022-2023 submitted to the Ministry of Education. Thank you. And do we have a second on the fifth motion? Seconded by Trustee Rosevich. Uh, is there any discussion? Um, I'd just like to say thanks to, to staff and everyone involved for the creation of the work uh, on this. And uh, I don't have any additional uh, motivation for the motion. So thank you, Chair. Great, thank you. Secretary Treasurer Walsh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just quickly, I just wanted to update the board uh, and the board have have received a copy of the letter, but um, we already are contemplating putting some of these actions in motion, particularly with respect to site acquisition. Uh, and so hopefully we'll have some movement on that uh, in the early fall uh, for the sites. You'll see the number of sites we're seeking uh, support for expansions or site acquisition in, in the plan. So since the business committee meeting, we have contacted the city of Nanaimo to, to to further uh, that process along. Great, thank you very much. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? With no one opposed, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. 12.2 uh, from the Education Committee. We don't have anything this month, so we'll move into 13 senior staff reports and I'll invite Assistant Superintendent Don Belcombe to, to present. Good evening. Thanks everyone uh, through the chair. This is in regards to board approved or board authorized uh, courses, so it's on page 29 of your package. And the recommendation is that the Board of Education of School District 68 and I'm a Ladysmith approve the following courses as board authority authorized courses known as BAA courses, peer tutoring 10 French immersion, peer tutoring 11 French immersion, peer tutoring 12 French immersion, West Coast Wilderness 11 and West Coast Wilderness 12. And I'll just speak very uh, broadly to these uh, courses and then ask uh, if there's any questions the trustees may have about these. Most uh, most of our trustees are familiar with the, the, the course peer tutoring where older students who have a, a passion and an interest in a course uh, attend <clears throat> alongside uh, a younger cohort of students in a younger grade level and offer uh, as the title would say peer support and peer tutoring and some of the benefits uh, for this course to the students who are uh, in the younger grade is a, a connection for a student who's maybe two or three years or four years older than them who uh, you know is a little closer in their age is able to relate to them perhaps a little more around their needs around that subject area than the, than the teacher would be um, so there's a real benefit to students who have a peer tutor in their class often students when you say what did you like about the course they'll talk uh, at length about the teacher made it exciting and it was really nice having a peer tutor there to support along the way so it's a benefit throughout the district um, Currently, we offer peer tutoring as a board authorized course in English, so we have peer tutors throughout our, our schools. Uh, we do not currently have a French immersion option, so if this board authorized course for the grade 10, 11 and 12 levels for peer tutoring and French immersion is trying to provide that opportunity for some of our students who are in our French immersion programs to pair their love of the language and the program that they're in in the French immersion program in supporting younger peers. And so we know the benefits for having some of our younger students have an older student as a peer tutor in a French immersion course will be the same that we've seen throughout the district for those students who have benefited from having peer tutors in the English track. Um, and it will also allow some of our students who are in the French immersion track who previously would have to do peer tutoring in an English class to be able to remain in the French immersion program and support younger students in the program. So we're quite excited to present the peer tutoring 10, 11 and 12 and the French immersion. 
Um, it's a translation. Uh, it's a, it's a similar as the course in English. It's just we had to have to have it approved in order for those students in French immersion to earn credits uh, towards the graduation program in French immersion. So that's the the peer tutoring courses. Uh, the West Coast Wilderness 11 and 12 is an exciting uh, board authorized course coming forward. As you probably are aware, West Coast Wilderness is a board authorized course at the grade 10 level and has a number of students uh, who are participating in that. So it has very good alignment with the board's goals around environmental stewardship and sustainability. And uh, students want more of this course and they want to go deeper and, uh, and, and expose themselves to, to a, a, a deeper understanding of the, of the wilderness course, um, take on a bit more of a leadership role. <clears throat> I think of it as students who get excited about jazz band and they take jazz band in grade 10 and they want more jazz band so they take jazz band in grade 11 and then in grade 12 they're really leading the jazz band and going deep on it um, right now <clears throat> we in that uh, in that analogy uh, we only allow kids once one year of jazz right and so we want the kids who are excited about west coast wilderness to be able to go uh, deeper into this experience and as a course that's offered right now at, uh, at ND, um, board authorized courses, as you know, are available to be offered throughout the district. So we're hoping to expand our outdoor education opportunities throughout the district and having this course available to students at grade 10, 11 and 12 will uh, will work towards that goal. So there's a very high level kind of overview of what those those courses are that are before the board for uh, for approval. And I'm happy to take questions and and uh, provide any additional information that I can. Great, thank you. Uh, Trustee Barron. Yes, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to uh, make a quick comment. I so appreciate you making uh, these courses happen. I I uh, wasn't aware that the French immersion students weren't able to peer tutor until now, so I'm grateful that this is being implemented. I think this is definitely a huge asset to the students and so happy it's being uh, put forward. And I just wanted to comment that, does it ever warm my heart to go past NDSS and see a line of students learning how to fish on the front lawn of the school? And uh, so I just wanted to, it, it was just, uh, you could just see how much fun they were having and, and what an amazing asset to our students to be able to learn some some skills and to get reconnected to the land. So I just wanted to say thank you and I'm very grateful for your work to make these courses happen and for bringing them forward to the board. Thank, thank you. you and I will quickly point out that uh, I, I'm not the one making these courses happen. These are coming from teachers that have a passion and they work with their colleagues to to uh, per, you know put the, the packages together for approval and, and I do very little with the staff to support these other than encourage them if there's a need and a desire to provide opportunities for students. So yes, and I and I concur with the, the fly fishing out on the front lawn of NDSS and I could stand in a river uh, all day and catch no fish. I think I could stand on the lawn of ND with a fly rod right now and be happy as uh, happy as could be as well. <laughs> Thank you. Trustee Keller. Yes, thank you through the chair. So I'm pleased to see the um, courses that were uh, being proposed. I'm very supportive. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, specific to the West Coast Wilderness Studies, what could be done um, to try and um, encourage the more teachers to take this up um, throughout the district? Because I know it does take kind of a, a special interest to want to be able to take this on. Um, and I, as I recall, uh, and I sorry, I can't remember which one of our, our staff members did a presentation for the board a while back, probably last year. Uh, one of the challenges was funding and um, seeing about maybe getting some funding together as a as a as district level to support wilderness activities, whether it's out, some outdoor equipment, fishing equipment, camping equipment, so on, so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I just kind of put that out there as a comment and a thought, and maybe there was a question in there in terms of what could we do to promote the program? Um, because I think this is really good opportunity for students to get reconnected with the land and with valuable skills. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And I, through the chair, I will respond that uh, there is a, a, a group of teachers throughout the district who have a passion and interest for outdoor education and they are working together. And one of the pieces that the, the board authorized courses will help is when a, a teacher at another school says, I would like to you know, invest in some training and professional learning to offer this course. 
uh, it's nice to be able to say this is a course that could have three consecutive years worth of students, right? That it's not a lot of training and investment to have a one time opportunity. So this is just one step for the board, a way that the board can support this initiative by saying, you know, students can get excited about this wilderness education and they can have it for three consecutive years. And hopefully that will be one of those opportunities for you know, teachers at other schools to say, I'm going to build a program at our school that does this. And it does take a big commitment, but there is a group of teachers at each of our schools who are talking about ways to provide more opportunities for students. And they've all kind of got their fingers into in supporting this, this uh, additional um, board authorized courses at the grade 11 and 12 level. Thank you. Do you have a follow up question, Trustee Keller? If I may, just a quick one. Um, is there opportunity for this program to be offered at the district level? So if we don't, for example, have staff at one of the facilities who wants to take this on, that perhaps students could access it from other facilities. Yes, through the chair, that's a that's part of a, a bigger conversation and not specifically just for this course, but for lots of courses. So we do have uh, many of our schools that have a uh, common timetable, so their start and end times are the same. Their block rotations are the same or similar. Um, so it is possible that if there is, you know, five students at one school that were that were not enough interest to run a, a course, that it's potential for them to join a, a group of students at another school to have that experience. And that is one way to grow programs, right, is to say, let's have you travel to another school to be part of a of a cohort till you get enough students to, to grow it back to other schools. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Right. So I don't see any other questions. So uh, Trustee Berzovich, did you want to read the motion? Uh, yes, if I can find um, I don't know. As I said, I would move it. Now I don't know if I can find it. That's can you read okay. it for me? Of course, that Thank the you. Board of Education of School District Number 68, Nanaimo Ladysmith, approve the following courses as Board author Authority Authorized Course, BAA, as per Ministry Policy, Peer Tutoring 10, French Immersion, Peer Tutoring 11, French Immersion, Peer Tutoring 12, French Immersion, West Coast Wilderness 11, West Coast Wilderness 12. Thank you. And I just quickly motivate to say that. Sorry, one Rick, second. I just have oh, to get a second. Get a second. Yes. by Trustee Keller. Go ahead, Trustee. Oh, it's it's okay. like I had done this before or something. <laughs> Go ahead. End of the year. Um, anyhow, I, I just want to say I know particularly with the French immersion, I know some students in, in that program who are really excited about the opportunity to be getting involved with to do peer tutoring and, and to be able to do it in French. And I just think it's a great expansion of, of, the, of our program. Really excited. And anytime we can get our kids out to the land is an amazing thing. So grateful for the, the teachers who have come forward to do this, uh, to create these courses and look forward to supporting them. Great, thank you. Is there any other discussion on the motion? So seeing no further discussion, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? With no opposition, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. So moving on to 13.2, Superintendent Saywell, uh, District Review Story. Hi, Scott, thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. Uh, hi, Squail, good evening, everybody. Um, it's been an honor uh, to serve the Board of Education and the NLPS community this year. Um, it's, it's been a year. Uh, while our future is uh, somewhat uncertain and not without uh, worry, uh, you know, we can see the, the end of the pandemic tunnel and I, I, I don't think it's a train. Uh, as a district, we have lots to be proud of. Uh, uh, President Dan Morris uh, from the Nanaimo Ladysmith Schools Foundation mentioned a few of the things like um, we made sure that uh, children of essential service workers had a school to attend in the early stages of the pandemic, and we made sure that students and families had food on their table. And we continued that food delivery uh, throughout the summer. Uh, teachers moved the educational delivery model online for a while, and for the most part, it was seamless, uh, maybe slightly overrated. Um, but they did such a wonderful job. We, we persevered through school exposures and we did our Indigenous communities uh, really 
uh, proud, I believe, by um, so much we did, including, uh, again, uh, Dan Morris mentioned that we did, uh, we ensured that all of our Indigenous students had computers. And in fact, other students, uh, we had a, um, a, a computer loan program as well. Uh, the list of accomplishments uh, goes on and on this year of what we did. I know teachers and support staff and students are all looking forward to a summer after a full year of uh, this uh, navigating this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, accommodating both, as I said, in-person learning and online learning, teachers and support staff were absolutely amazing. And as our, as our frontline workers, uh, they were the face of the district for, for parents throughout this pandemic, keeping their children safe. And we, we all owe them a, a debt of gratitude. Um, to our principals and vice principals, exempt staff, our, our NLPS emergency operations committees, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Truly a selfless group of individuals who put into practice whatever the provincial government, Ministry of Education, um, or the provincial health office uh, demanded of them. Um, uh, they did it all and uh, with, with grace and poise. Thank you to our medical health officers um, across the island uh, who were giving of their time, joining us in things like uh, town halls, information sessions. Um, anytime uh, a school wanted them at a staff meeting, uh, they were there to uh, support. Uh, a special thank you to our own medical health officer, Dr. Sandra Allison. Uh, no matter what she was doing, any time of the day or night, I could always reach her. I would text her. She would text me back immediately and uh, meet with us online uh, at a moment's notice. Uh, hi, Chika. Most of our students, I, I think, will be um, okay coming out of the pandemic, but we have many who will not. Uh, some will for sure experience long-term psychological effects. Uh, many have stepped into, uh, haven't stepped into a school in uh, 16 months. And for some, that transition back to school to in-class instruction is going to be difficult. Uh, loneliness, fear, anxiety, depression are all pandemics that have been running parallel to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, coping with post-pandemic stress, fear and worry is real and the work to ensure that we have safe, caring, healthy learning and working environments that are inclusive of the diversity of our entire learning community has never been more important. Uh, to say that the pandemic has changed all of us is an understatement. It has changed everything about us, uh, the way we work, live, interact and learn. And so, of course, it has changed the work that staff are doing to deliver on the goals and objectives of the board's strategic plan. We didn't, you know, completely abandon our strategic plan this year, but we did shift focus for sure. And um, what we had originally planned uh, took a bit of a back seat in, in some circumstances. Uh, you recall the staff, staff presented to the board in January around our operational plan. And, uh, you know, along with the associated changes that took place because of COVID-19. Uh, tonight, while I'm not going to uh, um, go through our uh, district review story, I, am, I have shared with the board uh, yesterday. And it is public uh, because it's part of this document. But uh, this is the 2020-2021 district review story. So in essence, the district review story is an overview of the year with a, a variety of data sets to demonstrate how we've done. Um, while we've been producing this district review story for a few years now, this is the first year that it's required to be submitted to the Ministry of Education as part of uh, the framework for enhancing student learning. So, the framework for enhancing student learning, you'll recall, is a public statement of commitment by the Board of Education to improve success for each student. Based on a collaborative assessment of needs and priorities of our students, the framework identifies areas of focus for the improvement of student success. 
Uh, further, there is a policy related and uh, a ministerial order that guides our work. That policy directs boards of education to set, create, and man maintain a strategic plan, to report on that plan annually. Again, we call ours, the, ours is called the district review story, uh, and put systems in place to continuously improve the educational outcomes for all students and improve equity for certain groups, Indigenous students, children and youth in care, and students with disabilities or diverse abilities. It also requires boards to submit, as I mentioned, a report complete, uh, completed in accordance with the order uh, between June 30th and September 30th. That ministerial order outlines the information or data sets that must be contained within the report and must be no more than 10 pages. So I've shared this document with the board and while it is still draft, um, we will submit this document before the deadline uh, in, in September. We also will put it on the website starting tomorrow, uh, but we'll keep, uh, we'll keep it as draft. At uh, the end of June, probably not the best time in my estimation, particularly this June, to jump into conversations about what the data is telling us. Um, and uh, we will present this information again in September to the board, uh, as we have in the past. So uh, I also appreciate uh, you have only received the board, um, you know, yesterday and you're going to need a little time to uh, to chew on it a little bit, explore the information. And uh, I assume you will be um, asking staff to present on one topic or another uh, in the fall or, um, you know, September, October of next school year. So uh, I'm not sure how much uh, and I have a skeletal staff with me here tonight, um, but if you have any questions, of course, we're we're certainly open to questions this evening. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I see a question from Trustee Higginson. Thank you, and wow, thank you for letting me off the hook by acknowledging that you're going to present this in September because I'm cooked. This is a year has it's been like four years in one. Um, but I do want to be able to do this justice because I think this is the most important work we're going to be doing as a board. And so one of my questions actually is about the presentation of the uh, grade four uh, reading, writing, numeracy, grade seven reading, writing, numeracy, and um, the utilization of FSA information. Um, and wondering how come we don't also uh, use our district wide assessment. So much time has gone into creating these really beautiful, robust, district-wide, created in Nanaimo Lady Smith Public Schools for Nanaimo Lady Smith Public School students, um, district-wide assessment. And it feels to me like it might be, you know, we always try to triangulate data and it, it seems like it might be a really good checkpoint for us as well, especially since the FSAs are so mired in politics. And I wondered how come we don't use that in this? Yeah, thank you. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Thanks for the question, uh, Trustee Higginson. A, a few years ago, when we instated this assessment in the district, um, there was some pushback from the teachers union. And so we agreed at that time that this is an assessment we would require teachers to use for their classrooms for in, uh, formative assessment purposes, but that we wouldn't at that time collect the data um, district wide and report on it. So. Um, we have some conversations if we would like to use that data um, more widely uh, to have with our uh, teachers union before we go forward with, with that. Um, I'll just add that um, I appreciate uh, input from trustees, which is why we'll maintain the draft on this even as it goes out publicly. And then any input that uh, we see fit to add to our, um, our submission to the ministry, uh, we, we can change it at that point. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you have a uh, follow up, Trustee Higginson? Uh, yeah, just to really encourage those conversations. I think that that is incredibly valuable information that we should be utilizing at the district level to help um, inform planning, 
it's you know made in Nanaimo for Nanaimo. It's such a relevant piece of information. I can't imagine why we wouldn't want to have access to every possible piece of information we could, especially when this really informs our, our planning and our spending. Um, so I really encourage those conversations and, and if there's anything the board can or should be doing to support the ability to be able to use that data, I, I welcome the board having that conversation as well. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for Superintendent Saywell? I don't see any more questions, so. Oh, there we go. Jesse Higginson. Sorry. All right. All right. Um, okay, one more. Uh, when we have the information presented again, perhaps it would be possible uh, to also tease out our adult dogwood rates. Um, I just, I think that that's a really important point of information for the board to have and for us to look at as well about you know the number of adults we have registered the number of adult dogwoods we're giving out um so we know how how and why uh I, so i would love to see that type of information too if, if it's available to the, the superintendent yeah thanks um, um through you madam chair um what trustee higginson is alluding to is that uh, students can graduate uh, in, in two ways, and that's with the regular dogwood certification or with an adult dogwood, which, um, by the way, are both on par. Um, what the uh, the adult dogwood is, is uh, it's a lesser number of uh, courses that are required for graduation. So although the um, again, they're, they're, they're on par as, as both graduation programs, um, and sometimes we use the adult graduation certification when students are for some for a variety of reasons uh, struggling to get through to graduation and we use it once they turn 18 years of old 18 years of age um, the challenge is that um, you know you still need those important courses to go on to any post-secondary institution and so that does limit our adult graduates in that way and so we, we really do want to limit the number of adult graduates when we can. Great. Do you have a follow-up, Trustee Higginson? No, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, well, Superintendent Saywell, it, you are quite right. It has been a year. Um, and given the year that it's been, um, I would estimate that it likely has been a successful one. Um, certainly in part to your leadership, the senior leadership team at the board uh, level and everyone in the system who works with kids and for kids, which is each and every one of us. So I just wanna say thank you. It's been as always a pleasure working alongside of you uh, with the rest of the board and I look forward to another successful year. I also hope that everyone gets a little bit of rest. So moving on in our agenda, we can move into unfinished business. Uh, let's see, that's myself and Secretary Treasurer Walsh. Um, perhaps I'll start Secretary Treasurer and then uh, pass it over to you. So we have on in your agenda package on page 76, there is a recommendation um, for the board to uh, delete Administrative Procedure 502 and adopt the draft policy. Um, and specifically, I wanted to speak to um, Hulk Amina in our schools. And so I will try to be brief, but I think it's important that we underscore this evening the importance of acknowledging uh, Hulk Amina language, uh, which is the language of these territories that comes from the land on which all of our um, all of our buildings are situated. Revitalizing language, Indigenous language, Halkaminam, is an important responsibility that the board should undertake as a true component of reconciliation. Um, it's in the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that how important Indigenous language is. We know that there are only so many speakers left that speak fluent Hulkaminam. And so any efforts that the school district can make towards the goal of revitalizing that language is vitally important. 
being able to embed uh, the advice of knowledge keepers into our policies such as this one and what you see the draft I think is an honor. Um, I appreciate the efforts that have gone in from everyone who participated in collaborating to create this policy, board members, uh, the school communities, our knowledge keepers, and everyone that sent in feedback as well. Um, while we may not always agree with some of the feedback we received, it is well put and considered by the policy committee. And I believe that we've landed in a really positive place for moving the district forward in how we look at naming our buildings and facilities. And so with that, I'll pass it over to Secretary Treasurer, um, who may want to share some of the background all around the administrative procedure. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this evening, uh, coming back out of the 30 days, well, more than 30 days of consultation, the uh, comments from the community are attached, uh, as well as just to note, there was a few minor changes where a comment from the community kind of highlighted that maybe our language confused things. We cleaned it up. Uh, but the, really there is no substantive changes based off the feedback that we had. Um, the one other gap though that we did notice based off the feedback is there is room we think for an administrative procedure which if the board does put uh, does support the motion tonight and the policy goes into effect we would come back to the board with some specific issues such as the issue of French immersion which is raised how that's addressed in uh, in in school um, names as well as uh, we often get requests or sorry we occasionally get requests to put um, you know memorial plaques or name trees after people or benches with people's names on them um, and of course um, being a neutral public education institution we try to be pretty careful about about that for the same reasons that we're a very res respectful and careful and when we name our facilities so we're going to put uh, outline procedures with respect to those issues that are not specifically dealt with in this policy and hopefully uh, come back and late fall uh, for the board's uh, review and so our community is aware of that but um, uh, otherwise uh, that would be the only uh, comments about the changes and next steps great thank you very much uh, do we have any questions from the board or is there someone that would like to move the recommendation the recommended motion okay trustee higginson Would you like me to read the motion? No, I'm just slow on the draw. Sorry. That's it. Uh, I will move that the Board of Education of Schools District Number 68 in Nanaimo Lady Smith delete Administrative Procedure 502 naming of school facilities and adopt draft policy naming of school facilities or parts of facilities. Thank you. And I see that's been seconded by Trustee Berzovich. Uh, Trustee Higginson, did you want to speak to the motion? Uh, other than uh, thank you for all the work that and the introductions that were just given by yourself and the secretary treasurer and the work that you've done on this. Um, I think that it's critical as well that we think about the language of the lands that our schools are on. And I support that effort uh, with all of my trusteeship knowledge and efforts to uh, revitalize the important language that the schools sit on. Um, so thank you for this and I look forward to seeing it enacted in a good way. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the motion? Okay. Seeing no further comments, I will call the question. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? With no opposition, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Treasurer Walsh, 14.2 uh, policy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is the second policy that we had out for comment and you'll notice uh, uh, really kind of proud of the community that they often take the opportunity to comment on multiple policies at the same time. Um, and so you'll see kind of repeats addressing both um, uh, this policy as well as the naming policy. We have not incorporated or recommending additional changes based off of, of the feedback. Of course, there's some expressed concerns about anything involving trustee remuneration. Uh, as a reminder, this policy is largely not going to impact the current board. 
uh, it will impact uh, uh, trustees uh, with respect to the next board uh, and and with where the changes do happen with the current board with respect to inflationary uh, issues. Those are already in place and they just weren't necessarily laid out. So it intended to be transparent to our public. So really no changes recommended given that the base policy came from a, a diverse uh, working group that did not include trustees uh, with so obviously some changes at the board table. So subject to any questions again, no changes recommended. Thank you. Are there any trustee questions or someone that would like to move the recommendation? Recommended motion, excuse me. Trustee Barron. Thank you, Chair. I have a question that I'm not sure whether I should ask it or not, but I'm going to go for it. Um, just curious if when we send uh, policies out for consultation in the community, uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be no, but uh, maybe it's more of an idea than a, than a question, but um, we don't include any information in there around what trustee remuneration, for example, really is, uh, what the job entails, any information for the public to be able to use for context when they're providing feedback around the policy. I'm just curious if there was any context provided. Secretary so Treasurer. Through you, Madam Chair, typically there is not, um, but we have, and not on this one to be clear, but we have in the past received direct questions from community members saying, well, what does this mean? Or where is this coming from that we we do our best to respond to? Uh, but no, we had, we didn't, we wouldn't, we did not provide that in the context. I suppose we certainly could provide memos because that certainly outlines why we're recommending what we're recommending which um, maybe mr burgos is listening we can we can incorporate that into the into the future because that outlines uh the thinking i, I believe uh, but no we, we did not do that in the current circumstance great do you have a follow-up question yeah, thank you. I guess uh, it would just be an opportunity. I'm thinking with a, an election coming up soon, perhaps there could be increased opportunities for education for a new board coming in and for the community at the same time to understand uh, the role. I know uh, there's a lot of moving pieces and and perhaps, uh, you know, a lot of work that's done behind the scenes that the public don't get to see. So it might be a good educational opportunity for new trustees coming in to know what they're getting into and for the public to understand the work that's uh, being done that may or may not be seen. Yep, okay, thank you. Certainly, um, I'll go to the Secretary Treasurer in a moment. Um, the Policy Committee also could uh, take that into consideration around how we put policy into consultation as well. So uh, we can take that note back to our next meeting. Secretary Treasurer. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I'm not sure what we've done in the past in, in the in this district, but certainly I'm happy to put on a so you want to be a school trustee session uh whenever anyone wants to come not typically uh that many people attend but uh put a few sessions on like that in the past where we did have prospective uh candidates come and listen to what the the role is and the the school act etc yeah great thank you uh Christy higginson i just wanted to uh to let to comment on the the work about um, what trustees do and before the next election, and there is actually usually a lot of work done by the uh, trustees association on uh, what does it mean to be a school trustee and trying to also educate the public about what school trustees do in order to increase voter turnout for boards of education because it's so critical. Um, so we do do that, but it looks like it's not landing everywhere. So good to see this feedback so that it can be done more. Great. Thank you. Uh, OK, so that takes us to the end of comments. Is there a trustee that would like to read the motion? Or I'm happy to read it for you and then look for a mover if somebody would like. I'm going to I'm going to start with that. We'll see what happens uh, that the Board of Education of School District number 68 and I'm a Lady Smith adopt draft policy 2.18 trustee remuneration, professional development and expenses. Is there a mover? It's been moved by trustee Barron. Is there a second? But trustee Keller has seconded the motion. Uh, trustee Barron, did you want to speak to the motion?
Well, oh, geez, it feels like so long ago that we had this discussion. And so now I'm trying to rack my brain around it. But I think a lot has been discussed. I'm happy it went out for community consultation. I, uh, I definitely respect and appreciate the comments that were made. And uh, I do think that highlights as I was bringing up sort of an education piece that might be helpful, um, whether that would change the opinions or not. I'm not sure, but I think uh, increased education is always and conversation is always a, a helpful piece and I do respect the committee that came together to um, provide these recommendations around how to move best move forward with the trustee remuneration and I think this is a, a great step in the right direction which would uh, commence with the next board and so for those reasons I'm happy to move this motion. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the motion? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone, so I will call the question. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? Your motion carries unanimously. Thank you. So moving on in the agenda, I would just like to pause for a moment as we're nearing the end of our agenda um, and just ask Director of Instruction Cadwallader to come up on my screen, please. Funny, I uh, often share thoughts with my colleagues. Um, Ted, the rumor mill um, has been telling me for quite some time now that you are retiring and I have spent many months in denial, complete and utter denial. <laughs> what can I say about Ted Cadwallader? Um, He's an incredible human. He is an incredible advocate who has a passion for language, who shares stories, knowledge, teachings, love, friendship, and knows exactly what it is to be family. Our school district will feel the effects of the work that you have undertaken for decades. I am so honored to have had the opportunity to spend time with you, uh, not only working, but learning from you. And I'm going to miss you so much and my denial might have to end this evening. However, I may not have the opportunity again, and I think it's due public acknowledgement, the impact that you've had in this district on reconciliation, your leadership, um, and most importantly, your friendship as a member of my family. So thank you. Superintendent Saywell. Yeah, thank you through you, Chair. Um, I, I met Ted uh, in his work with the ministry at the time through the uh, uh, Nanaimo Lady Smith Public Schools was uh, one of the original districts to be involved in uh, the pilot project at the time um, called Equity in Action, um, where I got to appreciate uh, Ted. And uh, not long after that, um, we had an opening here and uh, Deputy Superintendent uh, Tim Davey and I were chatting about, you know, who might apply. And uh, we were hoping Ted would apply. Um, he did apply. And our concern was at the time, we didn't know how long he would stay. Um, he was at the end of his career and uh, we would have taken him for a year. Uh, we would have taken him for as long as he wanted to stay because Ted was not, he was here for a good time, not a long time. And um, I appreciate uh, Ted so much. Uh, he's done so much for the district, but what he's done for me is this, uh, and I've learned so much and all the things uh, like language acquisition. Uh, I mean, he's, he's set us up for the future. Um, but he has, uh, and you know, decolonizing this district, but here's what he's done for me. He's taught me to walk differently on the sacred lands of the Snanemo, the Staninus and the Snanawas people. And he's been a mentor of mine um, for his time here. Uh, he won't be forgotten. And uh, uh, I love you, Ted, we love you. Thanks so much, everybody. I don't think uh, Trustee Higginson would like um, to speak on behalf of our CIA family. Mm. 
if if I can get it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ted. Well, you know, you might be retiring, but you don't get to leave the family because you don't retire from family. So we are we are going to keep you. Um, but Ted, your contribution to children in this province and in this district is um, incredible and will be felt for many generations to come. And we will continue to feel them because I, I think you're not going to go far. Um, and we are so lucky that you ended your career here with all of that experience and brought it home to us. And I know that your uh, vast experience um, is what helped CAS, uh, you know, really take hold and, and have its good, strong roots. And uh, I just want to thank you for um, helping that process take hold and um, and for your long career dedicated to children. They're so we're all so fortunate to have had your time here. Hi, Chika. It's OK, everybody. Um, it was my pleasure to work for this board for the last three years and for the senior staff in this district who who were already stepping on this path and wanted to be different. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better opportunity to end my career in education. I was 38 years starting as an elementary school teacher who had absolutely no idea what they were doing um, and then to be looked after by by Indigenous people and superintendents and parents and staff, but be looked after mostly by kids uh, over the course of that time and be taught how to be a better human being uh, each and every day. So I couldn't have asked for a better district to come to. Uh, you gave me so much freedom to uh, try the ideas that I thought would work. Uh, you were so willing to uh, walk in a different way. It's just been an absolute, uh, I couldn't have asked for a better uh, place to land for the last three years. And I look forward to doing more work with the district uh, on language, on on helping us walk uh, well on this territory. So hi, Sap, hey, everybody. Hi, Ted. I'm glad Ted talked for a minute so I get my breath back. So if anyone is curious under for information, there's a board motions report and uh, trustee committee reports. Is there was there any questions on those? Not seeing any. Uh, do we have any questions this evening? Let's see here. Not seeing any questions. OK, so I will uh, seek a motion to adjourn, please. Uh, motion by Trustee O'Neill and seconded by Trustee Higginson. Is there anyone opposed? There's so many seconds, probably not. All right. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a restful summer. Take care. All the best, everybody. Happy summer. <laughs>